Well, hi everybody, Scott Swinford, American Hero Home Loans. Hey, I want to drop a short video today. I've had uh, several real estate agents reach out to me um, on VA loans and said, hey, uh, I was just notified that the appraiser called Tidewater. What is that? What does it mean? What does it do? Should I be worried? Um, so here's the lowdown on what Tidewater is. And just a little bit of background. So Tidewater, it's kind of a strange name actually, but it um, was what they call the Tidewater Initiative, which started in the Tidewater area of Virginia. Uh, initially began as a test program in the early 2000s and was expanded to all areas of the country in 2003. And yes, I'm reading that off of a, a form here. So, um, but just, so that's kind of what the weird name is is and where it came from but what does it mean so during the VA loan process when the appraiser goes out there does the actual inspection if they're not coming up with the value for the purchase price they call something called Tidewater or they'll let the lender know whoever the representative is lets the contact that ordered the appraisal and just say I'm calling Tidewater so essentially what that means is and it's, this is one of the two ways that you as an agent can actually help influence the appraiser. So what they're saying is, essentially, just common language, is, um, hey, agent, hey, lender, I'm not coming up with this value. And let's just use a couple round numbers here. Let's say that the purchase price was $200,000. Well, the appraiser's not going to say, I'm only seeing 190, 195, or whatever that number is. What they're going to say is, I'm not coming up with the value to substantiate the $200,000 purchase price. So here's a couple things that you need to know. Um, one, again, they're not going to tell you what value they're coming up with. So what you need to do as an agent is make sure that you can substantiate the value of the purchase price. Now, Tidewater was not designed to help you increase the value of the subject property. It was designed to help you substantiate the value and it's there. So what I would suggest is beforehand, when you're, in, if you're the, the buyer's agent or even the listing agent, um, do a comparative market analysis on this property and, and find out what value that you can substantiate. Now I understand that there's a lot of times where that the borrower, the veteran borrower in this case, because they are VA loans, um, wants to go over what you think might be the fair market value. So let's say in this instance, if it's a $200,000, they're asking for it, they may say, I'll, I wanna go 210, 220, whatever that number happens to be. Well, if you can't come up with a, a good comparative market analysis to substantiate that, then you should probably let your veteran borrower know what they may end up having to come in with additional cash. And if they're okay with having an appraisal gap and they're okay with paying that, um, if they have to, then that's something to certainly consider. Um, I've heard agents out there that just are making wild offers. We'll offer 235 just to get it the, the um, offer accepted and then not be able, the appraisal doesn't come in anywhere near that and the borrowers are not able to cover that appraisal gap. So sometimes there are things that we can do to help work that out, but that's a pretty substantial difference. So now if it doesn't work out, the, the seller has had their home off the market or marked contingent for a while while this is going on and they're losing time. We certainly don't want to see the buyer or the seller have to go through this. So what I would suggest is make sure you're doing a good comparative market analysis that you know what you believe that the house will appraise for. And if the, the veteran borrower decides they want to offer over that, just make sure what they have some funds that they might be able to bring into it to cover that appraisal gap. So um, essentially what happens is the appraiser will reach out and say, again, I'm not coming up with this value. Please substantiate it by providing some comps within 48 hours. Um, generally, they're looking for three comps, kind of apples to apples comparables. If the subject property is a 2,000 square foot ranch on a basement, um, don't submit a 1,200 square foot Cape Cod on a slab. Um, don't submit other things. We want them to be as close as they can to the subject property, again, to substantiate the value. You can always put down any notes in there, 
um, if you'd like, and we can send to the appraiser. Um, I don't know how much it helps, but if you want to document things like this has a new kitchen, or this has this, or you know the comparable, it's three blocks away, it sold three months ago for X number of dollars, we want to use that one. But the subject property has this in addition to that, which is why we are substantiating the purchase price that we have there. So what will happen then is once you do that, it's nice to put them on a grid so you know the difference. You don't have to do that anymore, but or I'm sorry, the distance, but you don't have to do that anymore. However, it gives the appraiser a little bit better idea of how far away these are when the um, when they sold. If you know of for sale by owners that by chance may not be in the MLS that the appraiser didn't have access to, um, certainly feel free to include those if they're good comparisons that are, going to, that are going to help you substantiate the value. So within 48 hours, those need to be submitted. Generally, your lender will submit that. They're oftentimes a contact with the VA, with the appraiser. And then once those are submitted, the, the appraiser will send the NOV, your notice of value, which is the appraisal back in, will be uploaded to the portal. At that point, we will know what the what value the appraiser put on it. Um, again, if it comes back in at say in what we're talking about is it at two hundred thousand dollars, we're good. We can move forward, not a problem. If it comes in lower than that, um, and there will always be mind you, when you look at the appraisal, they should always put in the comps that you provided and make notes on them, whether they were good comps, bad comps. Um, Again, different housing style, too old, outdated, um, much different year built. We had one we were, um, was built in 1992, I believe, and all the best comps were either built between um, 1960 and 1970 or were built between 2018 and 2020. So with it being right in between there, it was a little bit tougher to provide good comps, but they had to be able to use those and then... Um, be able to just make remarks with saying these this home is newer than the ones we used or this home is older than the ones they used however the appraiser will make those notations on the um, on the, the appraisal report so again if it comes back at value you're good you move forward if it comes back under value there's certainly a couple of things to do and that's really within um, your realm of negotiations whether the the buyer will accept less at the appraised value, which really should be considered fair market value, or if the uh, buyer will be able to bring in some extra funds to cover that, because we are um, we are able to lend up to 100% of the purchase price or the appraised value, whichever comes in lower. So if the purchase price is under the appraised value, let's say the appraisal comes in at 230, and the purchase price was 200. We're good. Um, there are a couple things we can do with that, but for the sense of what we're talking about here, um, let's just say that no problem. Again, if the appraisal comes back at 195, then that's the 100% mark that we can lend at. Um, and again, there would be that appraisal gap there. So again, we can either have the um, the buyers and sellers this can also agree to meet in the middle somewhere, or have the buyer accept what the appraisal came in at, or I'm sorry, the seller accept what the appraisal came in at, or the buyer can, can bring in cash if they need to. Um, if that is not going to work, there's also something called a reconsideration of value, but we'll do another video on that on another day because that's entirely different. But what I wanted to do is just kind of give you an idea of what Tidewater was. Um, again, there's agents out there that are doing VA loans that, that were, have reached out and said, you know, I've done a bunch of VA loans and I've never had Tidewater called. Um, and that's either good or bad. One, it's good if the appraisals are all coming in at value, so that works out really well. It's bad because not every lender will let the agents know what Tidewater was called. And then the, after that 48 hour period when the appraiser sends the, the appraisal back in, it sort of is what it is at that point. Um, you've kind of lost your ability to send the comps into the appraiser to influence their value. So again, there are a couple other things we can do after Tidewater if we're not successful, if we can't come up with a, with a way to complete the deal. Um, but again, that's a topic for another day. So if you have any questions on Tidewater, 
what it is, if you should be worried, um, what you should do, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to walk you through it. If you're not sure about what we said in the video, rewatch it or give me a call and I can explain it a little bit more. Um, but again, it's not something that you should be worried about. It's an opportunity for you to influence the VA appraiser um, and something you can't do with conventional or FHA. So um, it's really is the appraiser saying, hey, work with me, help me come up with this value. Show me where, um, where you came up with the, the sales price that you're using and let's substantiate it to see if we can get this veteran into a home. And that's really what it's all about. So folks, again, reach out to me if you have any questions. I will follow up with a video on reconsideration value, which is step two after Tidewater we're not successful and I'm going to keep doing some videos on different aspects of the VA home loan program just to help uh, educate uh, our agents and our buyers out there so they better understand what's going on so have a great day and we'll talk to you soon bye now